And we are live at Nukiga Talks, and uh, we are in Torshavn. I just landed back in the Faroe Islands after four months, and I, I'm here with uh, Sissel Christensen, yeah. and uh, she uh, is the founder of uh, and the owner of uh, Sissel Brands. Yeah. And uh, she's also created a documentary about wool and the potential and history of wool in the Faroe Islands. Mm -hmm. So, Sissa, how did you get into knitting and wool? Yes. Um, um, in the Faroe Islands, it's like you learn to knit in school, but I learned to knit by my grandmother when I was five years old. Um, we learned, and then we learned really how to knit in when we, come to, when we go to school. Um, so, um, she taught me how to knit, but I didn't start knitting like sweaters and things like that until I was a little bit older then. I didn't start at five to knit sweaters, but, but I started to, I learned how to knit as five, at five and then started to knit later on. We are both from the Faroe Islands, so we know uh, that Faroe knitting is a big part of the culture, but how is it when you grow up uh, among the girls? <laughs> is it that all the little girls in the Faroe Islands to learn to knit? Um, well, I'm 49, uh, so I don't know how it is with young girls today. But when I was when I was young, when, when I was a little girl, we 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 all knew how to knit. We didn't knit. We didn't have knitting clubs in my group. Uh, we were more football and or soccer or whatever you call it, and things like that. Um, but all girls learn how to knit in school at least, uh, and. In, in, in my age, well, girls who are my age. Uh, now it's a little bit different. Uh, it's, it, it seems it's mostly the grandmothers who teach the girls. Uh, I'm not sure if that's 100% true, but it seems like a lot of grandmothers teach their young girls, granddaughters to knit. Um, we don't have that, the, the culture has changed, life has changed. Uh, and now it's probably more uh, the granddaughters who teach their grandmothers how to do TikTok, yeah. uh, the other way around. Um, but and and they don't learn to knit in school the same way as we did. Um, but I'm guessing that you will find a higher number of young girls knitting in the Faroe Islands than in many other countries. But I don't think we have hundred percent at now at the moment. Yeah, I don't think so. So now but I don't know. TikTok and the small, uh, uh, how do you call it, distractions. Are yeah, going. yeah, but and and I also think that many of the girls might learn how to knit on, for example, YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. So they learn how to knit in different ways than we learned. Uh, they, well, this is old me guessing. I don't exactly know, um, but that's my my guess is at least if you look at young girls today, many of them. Uh, are knitting a lot um, yeah. and they become quite good at it but they knit and this is worldwide and they they are mostly taught uh, via uh, social media or, or started to get interest in knitting and um, patterns and what they can create uh, themselves so they can make things themselves uh, this it seems they they are taught or, or they, the interest is awoken uh, on social media and they're taught via tutorials, different tutorials. Um, so, so yes, I think that's, that's the big shift there, but I'm not sure if, uh, if it's TikTok as such. Yeah. No, I don't know that. I'm thinking uh, knitting uh, used to be like a social thing you do together. Uh, yeah, in, in Faroe Islands, uh, we used to say that all girls are in a knitting club. Yeah. Uh, at one point in their lifetime, uh, some of them are for like almost the whole life. Uh, for example, my grandmother, she was, she used to, uh, my Danish grandmother, she, 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 when she moved to the Faroe Islands, uh, just after the war, she became part of a knitting uh, club. And she was part of that knitting club until she moved back to Denmark um, after my grandfather died. Uh, but my other grandmother, my father's mother, she was in that same knitting club and she was 
and that they, they were active until she moved into an older uh, older person's people's home and 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 which i think she died in 2012 if i'm correct remember correctly and and she that knitting club was still active although i don't think they were knitting as much yeah. but they were still active and they started just just after the war they started this knitting club so that knitting club was active for well 60 years this, this almost is, 60 years this is still active well they they're all dead now okay. so it was almost <laughs> almost 60 years it was they were they were active uh in the, in the same group um me and my friends we don't we don't have an active knitting club yeah. we, we we it's on and off and then we decide maybe we should start knitting again and then it's more white wine than it's knitting so yeah that's more our uh, dynamic friends dynamic and i thought that with the old club you could actually be, bring younger mem members so it would never die uh no I, I think i think it's more no i don't think you have that a chain that is held alive yeah. i don't think it's so. always the same yeah it's, it's yeah it, it is a group it's a social thing you, you discuss people they they start from discussing um potential boyfriends just to, to discuss uh diapers and children and and then and then preschool and so it's 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 the same group that follow uh some people some groups are neighborhood like there's a neighborhood so they they they, they might not be friends originally but they all live in the same neighborhood and this is a way to socialize and also discuss things in the neighborhood and learn to learn from each other in well ups and downs and should we ask the municipality to get a new sign up for now children playing or something i i don't know um but it's 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 different different groups some mission clubs are connected to a workplace um so yeah but but i'm not i'm a knitter but i'm not an active knitting club person yeah i don't do that did you when uh, you were a kid learning to knit did you have a special uh, passion for it or no not not necessarily uh, my family is quite creative and it's like this is something they talk about that some some families are more creative than others uh, or we are all creative but some do more creative things uh, and for me, it was more or less expected that since I was a girl in this family, uh, I was more or less expected to do something creative or handy. And uh, if it was weaving or knitting or uh, crocheting or some something in terms of of crafts, uh, I was expected to do. Um, not something that not that my grandmother like told me that you should do this and that but it, it was like a subtle uh, this was just something people expected I, I, I felt uh, I didn't I don't think I necessarily had a passion for because of them but I had a knowledge and respect uh, because of my especially my my, uh, my father's mother and my uh, two of his sisters um, mainly those who who got me into knowing a little bit more and i felt so, so and now that i my interest for uh the fairies wool and the sh sheep uh and knitting has rekindled in a way um one thing is it's fairly sad that my grandfather my grandmother sorry that she's not here because now i have so many questions that i would have loved yeah. to ask her that i didn't I didn't want I didn't have the questions when she was alive. I have the questions now. Um, and and things that I would have loved her to, to have taught me, but I didn't have the interest when when she tried to teach me. Yeah. So so but that's 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 the story of life, I guess. Yeah. So but yeah. Um so I didn't have that interest. Uh, my interest in knitting, um I feel that I have always knitted, but I don't. I didn't. Um, I don't feel it's part of my identity uh, when I was younger. I didn't felt. I didn't feel it was part of my persona. Uh, I think it's quite recent that it's become part of my 
persona. Um, I don't really know when the shift was, but in in a way, it feels like it was when I started high school, actually. Yeah. Uh, or what we would say, I went, went after. You no, know, I did. I did also this before that, but but it feels it's it's later on in life that I started to to become a knitter yeah. in, in 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 that sense. So, and uh, with the, the fairies, as you said, the old people they had a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Well, and, they were younger when they had the knowledge. Now yeah. they're just older than I am. Do you think a lot of it has died, or have we been good at preserving it? No, I think a lot of it has died. Uh, quite a lot. Uh, we were in Paris in um, in February, uh, and we were having this uh, exhibition where we were presenting the film that I the, the documentary that we made, uh, and it was uh, the four of the companies uh, part of the documentary. Uh, the, there's like five brands featured in in the documentary, and four of them were in Paris to to present um, the whole concept and, and also present their brands and their brand and, and, and products. And one of, and, and the Danish, uh, it was the Danish embassy and the Danish, they really wanted us to have a knitting club, but none of us really went, were part of a knitting club. So none of us really felt like that was the most natural thing for us to do. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't like, it's not what we do. Um, so we and and we didn't really feel how would it work would it be too stiff to sit there and pretend now we're sipping tea and and knitting uh, and having cake it, it it felt a little bit um staged which if, of course it would have been uh so we so we decided to knit in a round so we're sitting uh the two of us who have the shop johanna and who has uh, the brand steinem and i and uh, so the two of us were knitting on, uh, I think it's 11 needles. Yeah, I think it's 11 needles. I, yeah, yeah, probably. Um, and we knit so that uh, we have, so so I'm knitting on this side and she's sitting opposite me knitting. And then we like, we knit the the same uh, sweater or body in, in, in a round. Mm. This is an old way of knitting in the Faroe Islands before they started to have these, um, connected needles that we have now. Um, so, and, and this is a very old way to learn how to to knit. Uh, they taught children to knit in this way, uh, or, or they taught them probably to knit with two needles, but taught them to to have the, the correct tension, to have the, correct, the right speed. And and because if you, if I'm knitting, if we're two who knit the same sweater, and one of us has a, a has a um, oh no. um, well if, if if the tension is different is fairly different then you can see it on the finish uh, item so so you know so this was the way they made sure that the children learned to do the correct tension yeah. so actually today you can find there's a quite a bigger difference between the tension when people knit in the Faroe Islands or, or around the world. So you will always you'll always look at if you if you get a, um, a knitting pattern you'll always look at the tension if it's because if, if you if you some people might need needles eight millimeters and other people others would need needles six millimeters to get the same result. Yeah. But as you couldn't do that back then, so so actually they have been more professional in their knitting in a way. It has been easier to get the same result. With the same knitting needles from different people back then than it is today, so we had to we had to learn to do this knitting in a round, yeah. Johanna and I, uh, and and it was quite fun. It's quite difficult as well, uh, but we didn't know this. But luckily, we Johanna's mother taught us to do it. Uh, she's not she's not that old that she's going to pass off uh, soon, but. But she's still in the older generation, oh. and 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 I'm and I'm afraid that if we don't ask these people now, then these um, these uh, techniques and these uh, these uh, knowledge will will just 
disappear. And now we do it only as a showpiece. Yeah. This is not something I wouldn't do. I wouldn't knit a, a, a sweater in around together with someone today. Uh, but I think it's quite, I think, I think we should make sure that people know these, um, where we came from. I think it's always good to know where you came from, yeah. even though you don't have to live in where you came from. Yeah. You know, the, you know the roots of the design and the roots yeah. of the knitting. Yes. So, so that's one of the, uh, another one is, is, um, coloring with natural, uh, my grandmother, my grandmother, she colored a lot with, um, uh, moss and heather and other things that i don't remember now uh and 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 i would have loved to know how she did that i would have loved to know how to to actually find uh if, if you go down to the third floor, uh drawer there yeah 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 uh, uh this is like this is a piece of fairy's um fur so you have, I would have loved to know how to make this into, yeah. into this, for example. Yeah. Because I can do this from this one to this one. Yeah. But I cannot do from this one to this one. And that has to, that is all done today with machine. It is mostly done with machine. A lot of people do know how to do this. So I should probably just uh, set time off to, to be, to learn this. Yeah. But I'm not sure if I have the patience to to do that. Uh, I I asked someone. Um, I tried to 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 learn from someone who who knows how to do this. Uh, how long it will take? How much? I would need forty kilo. No, four kilos of this kind of wool. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to get uh, a sweater made with the finest, the inner wool is quite soft and um, whereas. This you you can see that this is coarse, yeah. whereas this one is is quite soft and it's almost like uh, cashmere. It's really 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 soft. So if, if I was to make me a sweater only with the soft wool, yeah, then it would need four kilos of wool, yeah, uh, and I would spend two weeks full time, yeah. like a full, two weeks <laughs> working week just to get enough to make me a sweater. With, uh, just just to get get me enough yarn to make me a sweater, yeah. and then I will have to knit it. So, so the ladies at home of the Faroe Islands, they used to sit and spend a month. Yeah, they have. Well, they they were they were better at it. They were more people. The children would um, the children would divide. I don't know the English uh, words for this, but they would divide this inner wool, uh, separate the inner wool uh, from the outer wool. Uh, that the children would have done, and and they would have, uh, and then they would all be help. All everybody will will be taking part in spinning and uh, carding. I guess it's called uh, washing, carding, and spinning the wool. Uh, everybody would would be take part of that, and then actually everybody would knit as well, men, yeah. women, and children. So so it's there's there's much more work in in a in a, in a hand knitted sweater than people tend to think how long does it take to make uh, i usually say that my sweaters in, that i sell in the shop i usually say that it will take us about 40 hours to make a sweater okay but mine are not uh because i sell them and because people don't want to pay the price for a very fine knitted with thin needles uh light sweater uh, they won't pay the price that it is. Well, they don't pay the price. Nobody will pay the price for the price of a sweater. Yeah. Um, uh, I was in Japan at one point where I was in a shop. Um, there was just a normal sweater hanging there. It was very finely knitted. It was very uh, beautifully. Uh, yeah. 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 The sweater was, uh, in a way, well, this is a cardigan, but uh, it was knitted like this, uh, like fine needles and, and small patterns like this, where this is machine made because yeah. you, you could never take the money. In the, you will you'll never get people paying what this is worth yeah, if this was handled. You just have to find the red market. 
Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, so, and it, I can't recall right now if it was 17,000 Danish kroners or it was 21,000 Danish kroners. Yeah. No, Jewish. No, it was 23,000 Danish kroners that the sweater cost. Yeah. And, and you would never have anyone pay that here. Yeah, <laughs> Not in a million years. Uh, and I don't know if it was sold. Yeah. The story doesn't say if, if, if they bought it, but, but still, uh, this is what it takes. Yeah. So the reason why I make sweaters uh, more like this, like, uh, this is just a top, but sweaters that are heavily knitted like this yeah. is because it takes less time and you can get a few sweaters through instead of just selling, uh, a few a month. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so. 40 hours is what I usually say. It's up and down. Some, some are this, this was, this one doesn't take 40 hours. Uh, but this is again, only a top. Um, but other, others would take maybe 50 hours, depending on what it is. So, but yeah, average. What does a 40 hour sweater go for? Uh, I sell it in my shop at the moment. I sell them for 1,800 Danish kroners. Um, but it's, um, but it's, it's, it's too low. So I, I yeah. actually have to, well, it is too low, yeah, <laughs> but, but it, it is, it is, I, I will have to, um, uh, make them, well, I have to hire the price because yeah. things, everything is more expensive now. So, uh, there has to be something left. Yeah. This is not just for fun to do this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. How, how long does it take to, to learn? Um, well, I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm 49 and I was five years when I learned. So I've been knitting for 44 years. Yeah. Um, um, it takes you, it takes you quite, quite some years to learn to knit so that it's even and it's sellable. Yeah. So I will say if, if somebody came to my shop and asked to be a knitter, yeah. be knitting for me, I would, I would definitely make sure that I know that this person has been knitting for well, I would have preferred if they had knitted for at least 20 years. Yeah. Um, but most, but you will also find people who are so good knitters that they can sell their stuff after five years. But I wouldn't, I would not have, uh, I would not have a new beginning. Uh, because it has to be even. It has yeah. to be, there are people who, because even though 1800 kroner is not much for a sweater, it's still a lot of money yeah. for the person. So you, you always have to respect the money. You always have to respect that for the customer, this is a lot of money, yeah. even though it's cheap. Yeah. Um, in, cheap in terms of how much it costs to make and yeah. the yarn and everything. Um, but um, so, so the person has to feel confident that this is not a baby who has made this product, yeah. that this is a skilled knitter. Yeah. they just made this so but it is for different from person to person but i don't think that my knitting was worth selling until i had been knitting for at least 10 years yeah. but i didn't try so it's well not, i did try yeah it's yeah. not something you can just uh, it's make, not something make a course or give a workshop and in uh, yeah, two for, months you know yeah, yeah for, for you knitting for yourself easily yeah uh, knitting for some of your loved ones easily yeah. But knitting for sh for a shop to sell, you have to be more trained. Okay. So, so you can easily you can easily learn to knit, and if if you if you are you don't have to be a perfectionist. But if you are someone who's who knows to make sure that this, like you double check things, you yeah. don't just rush through it, then you can easily knit a beautiful sweater uh, for yourself with only like the second second run yeah but there's a very big difference between making for yourself and your loved ones and for a shop yes you see the difference uh when if it's done pro or if it's done by someone who's just humility. yeah you can you can see you can see sometimes when somebody um yeah i can i can see when it's if, if somebody's not a good knitter but you can also have been knitting for for all your life and you still have um uh, yeah i'm lacking in the word uh, um 
just just not just not done yeah. well enough. Uh, that, not, that, not, not thorough. Yeah, you you that you can still uh, see after many years, but it's it depends on if you like it, if you knit because, um, yeah. Well, it, it's it depending on person to person, and it's and and the good thing it's allowed. Yeah. You are allowed to make a sweater that's not that doesn't look like made by a professional, uh, and and this is just by yourself. It, it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah. as long as you care. The most the most important thing with knitwear, I think, is that when you knit, uh, you make things that you care for. Yeah. When you make it yourself, uh, usually you will care for it more than if you. Just bought it uh, from a um, um, well. I'm not going to name uh, name brands, but like this fast fashion style. Yeah. If it's just something that like when you wash the ones, it changes colors or something like that. Or if if it's just sewn with an overlocker and and it tears up easily, that's that's not something you care for. The same way as you would care for something. That maybe your grandmother made, or you you yourself made, yeah. or you bought from from a shop like ours that costed a little bit more, and you know maybe this is part of this and this is part of that culture, or is part of that place's history or something. Yeah. And it doesn't matter; it doesn't have to be the Faroe Islands. Just the fact that somebody has it could be any country. Uh, it just just handicraft made with love. Yeah, exactly. The sentimental value, like if you lose something you bought, even though there was an expensive sweater, compared to if you bought something that your grandma made with her that heart, will be and very you lose different. it, oh, yeah, that will be totally very, 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 very different. Yes, because yeah. you know she sit there and was thinking about you and, while and, she was making. And sometimes people forget that, and I think, uh, well, I'm, I'm, well, at least I sometimes find that people forget that when they get something from their. Uh, friend or family member or someone who made something specially for you. And if, just imagine, they've been sitting knitting for 40 hours yeah. to make, well, and this is, you, if you give as a present, it's probably one that took more than 40 hours because we are quite good knitters. We knit fast. Yeah. Uh, if you somebody sit there for 60 hours making something for you, instead of just going to a shop and buying something and spending like 20 minutes on that, yeah. There is some, there is some degree of affection. I yeah. will find it. You should, you should, you should always be happy with, uh, glad when you get presents. Well, you should always rec um, recognize what people are doing. But if they've been sitting for 40, 50, 60 hours knitting, yeah. then you shouldn't just say, oh, oh well, I don't like it. It's not my style or something. And then you should at least make sure that somebody else. Who will love it? Will yeah. get it? Gets it afterwards. Time invested. Yes, with it's a lot very of love. much time. And time is time is uh, is the biggest, uh, is the more expensive, most expensive uh, thing we have. Yeah. So yeah. And uh, so wool uh, has there happened a lot the last five ten years in the Faroe Islands with the fashion and the wool. And... I think you have to go further back. Uh, you have to. Um, there was um, uh, when when I when I went to high school and we knitted. It wasn't wool. It was mostly cotton. We knitted. Yeah. Um, or it was um, soft, softer Norwegian wool. That was what we knitted in in my my circle of friends and class. Um, uh, then came uh, Gurun and Gurun, uh, Siri, uh, Snaltan started to do. Uh, they, there were three, and there was somebody else as well. Pau was one as well. They were all more or less in the same time period when they tried to reinvent knitting. Mm -hmm. uh, Gurun Gurun went with uh, very beautifully uh, patterned sweaters uh, that were based on fairways uh, knitting traditions. They did also some um, uh, furs with fairways uh, sheep uh, skin. Uh, and they, they were doing that, that direction. 
And then there were, uh, for example, City, which was also quite a big company. Um, they did more, they were not so much hand knitting, uh, or, or they did hand knitting, but they didn't, that was not their breakthrough, I, as I recall. It was more machine knitted, but, but they used the fairies wool. And they, and they, and they designed a sweater or sweaters and jackets that were different from, from what we are used to see. Uh, and then there were other companies, uh, and then um, so we we had before that we had had uh, Snaldan and Tuttink and somebody else um, who had had patterned sweaters, but they weren't. They were more. They were very traditional. Uh, and they were more or less the same as we had had for many, many, many years. And then they, these new brands came with a new hope um, and belief and vision for knitting and the wool. And and where, and of those, Gurun and Gurun has become the flagship. Mm. Uh, they are. They have. They have made knitting uh, popular again. And they made. They have made knitting. Or they made uh, knitwear popular again, and they made it okay to go in and buy knitwear for more than because people I hear people coming coming into the shop here, and then they take a sweater and then they look at the price, and then they say, "This price, the yarn only costs," and then they say like a quarter of of that, and then they think that we should have a open store, pay pet uh, like heating and staff and and have been making it and not have it getting a revenue of it so so and so we still have that but yeah. people were starting to pay for a product yeah. that was designed by someone who had a vision who had a uh, really really strong um design eye yeah. a really really good designer and and so and that changed, and this is this is about the start of this millennium. Uh, this uh, yeah, this uh, two thousand. Um, it was start, it was beginning of this, um, and then um, and since and then COVID came and made everybody uh, well not everybody but a lot of people start to knit around the world. Yeah. So that also made knitting. People got their eyes open for knitting uh, worldwide, much, yeah. much more than uh, it has been. And a lot of people come in here uh, looking for. Uh, I, I see a difference from before COVID and uh, and after. Yeah. How people come in and the way they there are more knitters in the shop now. There are more people who come in and say, "Yeah, I actually like to knit it. I just started. I just recently learned how to knit." So, so we have that, and then we actually. It, it is not just um, um, uh, there was a customer who came from the UK uh, talking about um, the killing, uh, which made it was the killing that made the uh, Gurun Gurun's Sarah Lund sweater so popular. Yeah, uh, or it was it was the breakthrough for yeah. for, for that worldwide. The killing, it's uh, for it's a, yeah, it's a series which became very popular, a Danish series. I haven't seen it myself. But there was a, a it was very popular and it had the, a, a different seasons and she had three different uh grown and grown sweaters on through that uh these three different series and but so and now now the killing started viewing uh in in, in the uk and now uh, the ferris drum uh has been been viewing uh in the uk and also there you have niche were in it and but it's it's not just these two, mm. these two. There are other things that they people have noticed the Nordic style. Yeah, N the Nordics in general, uh, Nordic countries in general are becoming more and more interesting and popular, and 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 with that the Nordic um, uh, sense of style or or design voice has become more popular, and in that knitting is part of it. Mm. Iceland, the Icelandic have been knitting uh, super popular sweaters for, yeah, I wouldn't say a million of years, but of course not that, but but for many 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 years, 
and so has the Norwegian. And 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 so so there are like you have the Faroese listening voice, you have the Icelandic, you have the uh, Shetland and Orkney. They're super well. I don't know. I know that they're not part of the Nordics, but they're still in this. Um, we have these these countries that have the ocean connecting them. Oh. So we are connected to the Shetland Island and Orkney in a way, even though they're part of the uh, UK. Uh, but we are connected via the we are, we are ocean people yeah uh, so 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 wool will always be uh, wool will always be a good companion because it's very good in 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 terms of the weather yeah uh, because it's so perfect for uh, the outdoors yeah so and if you go and one of the reasons why we have also exported so much uh, niche wear is because people who have been on uh, fishing uh, they have worn our our sweaters and Norwegian and Swedish sweaters as well and Orkney sweaters so it's so it's all these things connected has made knitting more popular and um, so it's it's it's, it's a many different things but the Nordic is one of them and and in the Faroe Islands um I'm, I'm, I don't. I don't think that COVID, as such, did anything good for our knitting culture because we, we did knit in in the first place. But of course, the more other countries start to knit and start to post on Instagram and and other social medias, and uh, they're knitting, then more and more people will start to do that. But I think there are a lot of people in the Faroe Islands who like to knit and who, who knit for grandchildren or or their friends children or something um but they still buy knitwear also and then there are those who copy so that's like yeah. the three things eh? i'm uh, thinking as with them and now you said it has gotten more popular uh, but so there are a lot of amateur knitters around now learning trying yeah. their ways yeah uh, how where are they learning is it from uh TikTok? is it from youtube are um, I, I, I guess uh well, I, I don't really know i don't i guess it's not TikTok because they seem older yeah uh maybe because i don't have TikTok, so i imagine nobody my age i do know they do yeah. but this like <laughs> that's my simple mind um but i think they they there's there's a lot of tutorials and there's a lot of especially because people were sitting at home yeah so even though they are still amateurs because they only is like COVID is well it's it's just it's just two and a half years yeah uh but if you're sitting at home and you're feeling fairly depressed yeah uh and you only have uh like netflix or television or podcasts and and radio to to um entertain you more or less and uh, then knitting is a good thing and then you can actually knit a lot you can actually in two years if you sit at home knit you can actually knit uh, six seven years worth of um, experience yeah. because if if you have a full-time job yeah. and you and and you spend a lot of uh, of transporting you back and forth and to the supermarket and go shopping and all these things that your normal daily life will take consume of your hours then you don't have that many hours to knit so you might maybe knit two hours a day in the evening yeah. for example that would that would be like a normal thing for me it would be two hours if i don't have enough a lot of knitting to do then i would knit two hours a day yeah but if if i were to sit at home and not get out yeah even though i do have if i had normal work and my work is knitting so but even though i had normal work um um then i would still have six hours to knit maybe yeah. or maybe even eight yeah. and if you're excited about this and this is something that makes you up this is your positive thing then you will knit as much as you can and and then there's a lot of um online knitting communities so it was this it was very very popular and and the more people and then there's always somebody who sees an a a possibility and then they start to sell patterns and 
tutorials and, and they have these different knitting online courses. So it becomes something that it, it exploded. Yeah. And but also some of these people, they still buy knitwear, yeah. even though they knit themselves, they still buy because now they now they see, oh, that one is interesting, that sweater. They didn't see it before because they didn't have interest in that before, maybe. Yeah. So it's that 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 is like a spiral, uh, and and that I, it it's not my theory, but this is like we we hear a lot about this. So it's 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 different, well, different uh, jigsaw puzzles. Are there any fairways online courses or? Is there I don't think so. I don't think so. I, yeah, I, I think the fairways are fairly uh snobbish uh in a way for that uh or it's like i'm not going to learn from her they yeah. would rather learn from somebody abroad than yeah. from another fairies this is a little no, bit no, I'm, I'm thinking about people, oh, people we abroad are... because the fairies with like the story like the documentary it, it would sell so well that like here we have such a strong knitting tradition and i think people would be really interested in learning it it, it could be, but you still will have to go out of your comfort zone and speak a different language. Yeah. And you will, there's a lot of, um, of um, uh, words that we don't probably don't do that well in English. Yeah. Uh, because we have them, we have first, most of us translate from Farewish to Danish to English. Yeah. So it's, it's, things can get lost in translation there. Yeah. Um, um, but I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's. There's probably a, a potential. It should, um, it should not. It don't, don't have to be live. Uh, they can just be planned. So if you don't find the words, you can look them up before. Yeah. So you don't yeah. make like fifteen minutes videos where you explain this, this, this. And then yeah. You have this uh, different teachers who have different styles. I think it would be really popular. For example, you mentioned the documentary. I did that in English. Uh, it was quite difficult to get people to be themselves yeah. because we had to speak English. Uh, and it's when you have like, well, at that point we had a camera, a cameraman and two directors and me. And so it was, it was a lot of people in the room. Um, but many of us became a little bit intimidated by that. Um, but again, this, we haven't promoted it as such. Not like not heavily in, in it. We just just bits and pieces here and there, uh, but still, it's only ten thousand people who have seen it so far. Yeah. So even though it's about knitting and about uh, Ferris wool and history, which could be quite interesting if you are interested in knitting, but there are a few um, there are a few um, uh, knitting fora. Uh, forums in uh, on Facebook, I think it's mainly on Facebook, who have shared it into their group. Mm. But it's not something that people will really spend their time on. It seems. But but it, I, I would I would love that we would maybe not teach, but involve people more in taking a stand in what kind of wool and yarn we use. Uh, and why we use this yarn for this and that yarn for that, why that is good. And then people can choose their style within that. Yeah. So, so they, uh, or, or just make them more equipped to take good uh, choices regarding this work because it's, it's too easy just to, just to read a pattern or hear someone say something. And just do that. Yeah. Uh, you have to. I, I, I find it a bit depressing, but of, but of course, if you don't, if you are a new knitter, you will go for what you find security in. Yeah. And and you will go for a pattern that all the others knit, or yeah. all the people that you ad, admire or you think are good knitters, you yeah. try to do the same patterns as they do. But it it is, it it's it's not this world missing world with patterns and and yarn. It is very much a um, uh, monopolized 
um, um, market uh -huh. uh, in the sense that it's not that nobody has a monopoly of 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 the market uh -huh. but you get in the in your head you get one or two brands uh -huh. and that's the only thing you can capture in a way uh -huh. so a, quite a lot of people do only use that that um uh, pattern provider yeah. or that pattern provider and yeah. then you have these people who have been knitting all their life they know they shop around they yeah. do but very many people do just go it's very uh narrow in a way um but i'm guessing that will change when they have become better or more uh, relaxed in this universe anyway uh, i'm thinking like uh you could uh, go online and you buy like a course to make this kind of sweater and then, mm -hmm. then you get it sent you get yeah. a, as a package you get mm -hmm. a course combined with a package mm -hmm. and then you then you see like it's basic and advanced and then you then you can uh, like you see what level it is mm -hmm. yeah there's there's actually one uh but he's not fair with uh there's this guy who actually has a great uh great um um he, he does that and he's super cool and then he's from from his uh, storage place he ships off yarn and patterns and then at three o'clock uh saturday or something everybody's ready and then then he's then he sends off the um the, the pattern and then everybody's knitting together but it's it, it this 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 could be very interesting but it's um yeah it could be very interesting yeah yeah. But it's still, uh, it's still a, um, it's still, uh, for example, I tried just now to make my first pattern to sell, even though I sell the sweater in the shop, I also sell the pattern. Uh, and it is actually my bestseller and I've only made it in Danish so far. Yeah. Um, uh, and it took me just to make the pattern, to make it uh so that you can follow it and i don't still know i don't uh, this i just uh introduced it uh on saturday so i nobody has there's not many who have knitted it following my pattern um so i don't know if it's if, if it's good enough yeah. i have a i have a feeling that it's 95 percent good it could there's probably something that needs to twerk back and forth but it took me I spent well I do have this this brand and the shop as well but it, I spent like two two to three months just making sure that everything taking the photos having a test knitter to test knit it before I made the pattern and 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 just working it through finding all these um different uh is this clear enough is is this logical for someone because it's easy for me because I made the sweater I made so many of them. Yeah. I don't so I don't see I don't see necessarily the faults that I have. I don't it's like spelling. Yeah, it's yeah, I so know what you mean. It's, so it's, so this is this is this is even though I love the idea of doing that, it, this is something that you will you will have to invest a lot in to make it uh or at you, least you have you to are, make sure to be to do it well from yeah. you it's subconscious you are subconscious competent it's like if you've been biking your entire life it's yeah. hard to learn someone how to bike instead of someone who's just learned how to bike he knows yeah yeah the issues because uh, you can never imagine the issues if you learn to bike as four years old yes yes exactly so if you learn to uh, knit as four years old you don't you don't know the hard spots yeah but it's it's it's, it's one thing is to knit uh, but there's uh, knitting is just not just knitting knitting is knitting uh, that way and that way and for example i knit in danish uh other people knit it's 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 it, i don't know it's continental knitting and then i'm not sure the other one uh i the fairways knit like the british i think uh, i knit as a danish and i think i knit as the russian as well i think the russians knit the same way and the americans i think knit well, I, well, it's, it's, there's there's this different. This is just knitting, and then you have purling is the same, like. But then you have all these different. You have Italian clothes off. You have uh, 
uh, this and this. Uh, it's a, so submission is not just one back and forth. It's it's different techniques with holes and and yeah and and you can hear that. I don't know all these words in English, but um, um, so so you have when you make a pattern, you have to make sure that you have. It's clear that this is. Oh, she meant. Oh, slips. Oh, you slip the stitch. Oh, the the yarn in front, not the yarn in back. Or oh, how do I go into the loop? Is it this way or that way? All these things, they have to be very. They have to be very. Uh, um, yeah, it have to be explained so that the 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 viewer or the reader will feel confident in it mm. so and so that's that's the thing one thing is to knit but for me as you said the subconscious that's the pattern for yeah. me the pattern i've done the sweater so many times so i know the pattern yeah so i don't see when i say something wrong because in my mind oh i, I read something and i know what i mean but i don't necessarily say that in the pattern when yeah. i write it so so all these things you have to go through. It is super interesting, and it's it's been really uh, fantastic working with this. But I just found that it's not just something you do like that. It's it is much more, <laughs> and I have to sell. I think, uh, yeah, I have to sell at least hundred patterns before I start to to to, to get something in. And the, the thing is, like with when you sell online, when you it's not the shop, you mm -hmm. can. As if you hit something red pattern and yeah. you set up the red marketing, all of a sudden you can sell like ten thousand. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So it's it's just about marketing the right way. And yeah, I yeah, think for the yeah. Faroe Islands, it's so unique here. We can run on like it's the sheep islands and the, the wool. Mm -hmm. and use your documentary and the, to I think you, you could sell it really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you, it, it is it is possible. It is possible. <laughs> yeah, if you dive into it, when you have to mean it hundred percent. Yeah, you cannot do this thing half. Yeah, so that's but but yeah, it is interesting. So uh, to your documentary, really well done. Thank you. Uh, really professional and very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, so from there, I saw that uh, they were like what was it called? There were, there were a lot of wool used to be thrown away. Yeah, it, it still is. It still yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. How do we fix that? Um, I think well. Hmm. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's about seven, 70,000 ton of wool uh, collected or, 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 or shorn every year. Um, last year, 26 ton were delivered at the agricultural agency. So that's uh, just, yeah, less than a third. Um, no, uh, no, above, above a third, sorry. Uh, this year, um, and then we did the documentary, uh, and there's a lot of people involved in this, uh, and I'm very grateful for for all them. It was because, as you say, they were the the crew. They were super professional, uh, uh, and that's what made it good. Um, but twenty six thousand, uh, twenty six ton last year. This year, thirty three ton. Mm. So, and that's quite a bigger difference mm. from 26 to 33. Uh, and actually, this year it was more difficult to get wool in because they were um, sharing the sheep so late. Yeah. Because due to the weather, then m many of the sheep have have actually uh, thrown off their uh, wool, their fleece. Yeah. It, and that's what sheep do uh, here in the Faroe Islands, uh, or our type of sheep do. Um, so, so they actually didn't get as much. So the actually, the the amount of wool cut uh, yeah. was lower, uh, or this is what they, uh, this is what I'm told. Um, but the amount of wool getting into the uh, wool terminal was higher, much higher. So actually, twenty twenty one. 70,000 became 26. This year, 70, no, 70 became 26. This year, 70 became 33. That's almost half, almost yeah. half of it. Uh, and, and that is quite big a step. Yeah. 
I'm told that this was also due to people shaming the farmers who didn't uh, deliver the wool at the agriculture agency after having not necessarily hearing seeing our documentary, but also by our documentary and the public talk about this natural resource yeah. as a shame is being waste, wasted and burnt. So, so the the thing that we did the, our documentary and somebody else does this and somebody else does that and the and the talk in town or the talk on the island becomes we should not burn our wool. It's a it's a shame and this and that mm. that helped in this. So I'm super proud of yeah. that. And, and I'm like amazingly proud of that. Uh, even if I only was a half a ton, yeah. then it's good. Yeah. If if I could just take credit for half a ton, I'm I'm happy. Um, but um, so so we have to do these different things. But we also have to remember that it's not just the farmer's fault; it is the consumer's fault. Yeah. Because not only do we consumers not buy the ferris wool because why would people spend uh, money and energy like like really energy uh, oil and things to make yarn if people don't knit with it mm. that's one so we have to we have to be we have to be open to using the wool the correct way again now i'm back to the the beginning that the ferrous wool is perfect for other wear. It's not perfect to, to against the skin, unless you do the thing with that I mentioned in the beginning yeah. uh, with the soft wool. That the the inner wool is perfect for for the body, or, or for the skin. Whereas the outer wool, the mix wool that we get, is perfect for uh, outer wear. At the moment, we only have mix wool, yeah. and we only have mix wool because the market doesn't. There's not enough money in it to to work with getting uh, uh, separating it yeah. because it costs. It's very costly. Consumers don't want to pay so much for the wool, so they either if if it's too expensive, then they say if if it was the correct price, then then many of them will say no, it's too expensive. I don't want to buy it. Then they go and buy acrylic. Yeah, and that's like oil. So. Yeah. And then that's a huge problem. Uh, and also, the less money the farmers get for the wool, and this is the Ferris government who has to give more money to to the agricultural agency. And I really do think that they should uh, set up more money to the agricultural agency to pay the farmers. Because at the moment, if the farmer who lives... Um, one two kilometers away from the agricultural agency and the farmer who lives uh three ferries or two ferries and and one hour driving away gets the same price of course the farmer who lives further away should get a should be compensated for that of course it should be because why would you if you live in a small uh, live in a small island and it will take you uh at least one whole day just to get the wool to the agricultural agency and you get less to nothing for the wool. Mm. Why should they do that? But there's still, then I was talking, I was a, at a, um, a sheep shearing uh, in July and I was talking to this elderly uh, man who had, I think he had six mother sheep and he said that he delivered the wool to the agricultural agency because it was was good money for him, so yeah. but uh, he was close enough for this to be economically uh, by uh, good for him. But if you don't live uh, in a driving distance, then is then it's not economic. Then you have to be a romantic to do this. Yeah, and we have to we have to remember that it's also costly for the in terms of oil, and in terms of driving and or if, for example a little bit more. No, it's not a dune, sorry. Uh, on the big uh, Dumont Island, you have to take a helicopter. Yeah. And then it's actually more environmentally uh, sane to burn the wool. Yeah. Then to and we also have to we also have to be more intelligent in our discussion and not just 
shame the farmers for not delivering the wool. Yeah, exactly. And they are, they are, there are farmers who don't care. Yeah. Who burn it? Let's talk. Let's let's see if we can have a conversation with them and see if how we can help so that we can get their wool. Yeah. There are some um, fields, other fields that are so far away from the main road that it will that it's 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 uh, lunatic. It's only lunatic who will drag that amount of wool across the mountain to yeah. the car to drive it. Don't blame, don't shame him. Mm. Shame the ones who, well, don't, you should never shame one, somebody, but, <laughs> but, but, uh, be, be talking. So shed the one who lives right next to it. Then. Yeah, who, who does do that? <laughs> Get, talk, talk with him in, in big letters. Yeah. And, and all the others who, who don't want to, who, who might be able to talk to them, help them. And, and and not help them like in a uh, like oh poor little boy, uh, but but like make it take well I can take it off your hands. Yeah. Uh, can I take it off your hands and then I can sell it. Let's let's do something like that and then the more wool we have, because we will never have more than seventy ton. Yeah. Because we will never have more than seventy thousand sheep. Yeah. Uh, and but we could, if we were doing if we were more. Um, uh, aware of the end product, then the farmers could work with how they would choose which um, ram to to be the like the main male ram that uh, makes all the Eves uh, pregnant. Um, then how how will we choose him that has the wool that's also best for uh, getting a better yarn? Yeah. So it's it, it's it's a huge thing. I only know about knitting, but I have a great interest in the other things. But I I know so little because um, because I don't have that knowledge. I, I haven't I haven't learned that. But I'm learning more and more and more. And and there's so many different people, both here in the Faroe Islands and other places, that have an interest in. It. Let's take King Charles. Yeah. He is a big environmentalist. Yeah. He's actually done. I, I, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with King Charles at the moment. Mm. Uh, whereas everywhere in the world, uh, the amount of wool, um, uh, the the usage of wool has gone down. In the UK, it has gone up yeah. because King Charles, then Prince Charles, um, he had campaigns. He has done huge campaigns to talk, uh, to talk wool up. Yeah. To so he's been a great advocate for wool. So people finding stuff like that it ha doesn't have to be a documentary like mine. It doesn't have to be sweaters like mine. But just the fact that we are more people who have different alternatives because not not everybody likes my style. Yeah. As in, not everybody likes uh, somebody else's style, but just having different things so that we can find these natural resources because wool is for us is a byproduct. Yeah. So we will still the sheep as long as we eat meat, uh, ram, uh, lamb here in Farinas, which I don't see that we will never ever stop with. As long as we will have sheep and it will be such a male. Um, a masculine culture that we have in that sense, the sheep will have wool. Yeah. Every year the sheep will shed their wool and we will have wool. We could either just burn it or we can do something with it. If we use the wool that the sheep have, because the, because the sheep in terms of environmentalism, uh, the sheep uh, meta, metan, um because of the sheep is that kind of animal that uh, gives out metal, metal, uh, and 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 that's a negative thing for the environment. Yeah. But at the same time, the wool uh, uh, collects uh, car uh, carbon. So actually, whereas the sheep, when it farts, is negative, but the wool itself, there's there's. It is collected here, and as long as it is still an active product, it is collected here. 
Yeah. When I because this is undyed, there's no coloring in this. There's no there's no um, um, uh, uh, yeah toxics in this. Yeah. So if I when I'm finished wearing this, I could actually just leave it outside in nature, and and all the nutrients from this will go back into the soil, yeah. and the sheep will eat that. So yes, the sheep is a bad. It's like. It's, it's, it's not as bad as uh, as the cows, far from it, but it is still in that category, yeah. in that family of, of animals. But it's, it is also because uh, it, it, it holds the, um, the carbon, uh, uh, it holds it, it binds yeah. it or fastens, I don't know the word. Um, so it's still also a good thing, and it is a byproduct. So yeah. rather do that than... Then, then um, tear down the uh, all these cotton um, plantations. Cotton is a wonderful product. I love cotton, um, but at the moment we are we are using it. We are breaking it down. Yeah. And and it's and we should we should rather give the soil time to recover. Yeah. So that we can get good cotton because the worse the soil is, the worse the cotton is. So it's like if, if you don't if you have a bad platform, well, it's you're not going to stand straight. It, it, it will be wobbly. Uh, so so rather try and see if we can come back to having all the good natural because we because the world was a much more natural place. Yeah. Before we start to over consume. Yeah. So rather to have fewer things again. This I know is a topic, but I'm saying right now. Yeah. But let's ha rather have fewer things. And then care for them and make sure then we can even go back to spending two full weeks <laughs> in just uh, getting the right wool. I mean, wouldn't that be the most amazing sweater, John? Yeah. And you will never lose that one. Yeah. You will you will care for it uh, as nothing else. There could be some like exclusive products, as the thing is people pay silly amounts to write the market for yeah. exclusive things. So yeah. It's, it's about like just uh, knowing how to market that market and positioning it as exclusive, like handmade and yeah. how much how much uh, went into making it. Because pe people, as they pay for exclusivity, they don't pay for usage. When it no, comes to the... uh, I was in uh, Greenland uh, and I was visiting a. Uh, there's a. Um, uh, they make Greenlandic clothes uh, with the beadings. Uh, it's called Kita, uh, and it's in a nook uh, down by the harbor fantastic workshop and there was this lady she was making a a um a like this greenlandic um top I'm, I'm not sure what it's called but the beaded top that they have the females and she'd been she'd been working for it for four months yeah and she had more months to go i don't know how long but she was sitting and making for a customer in the states and it was beautiful it was so beautiful and this was a special uh um uh yeah special requested thing that she made and she got she was paid uh, like hourly wages so it has cost a, a fortune yeah uh but there's a customer who wants to pay for that and that's always good but you can never make a brand by one lady who spends almost a half a year to make one thing, yeah. she will never be a sought after brand, yeah. unless you are exceptionally good at branding. Yeah. If you can sell two pieces a year and be like the brand, yeah. that is going to be very difficult. If you have to have a brand to 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 be able to 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 tell the story correctly, then you will have to have more than one. Then you will have will have to have many people doing this. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that, uh, if basing a brand, um, it's easy to find one customer who wants yeah. to pay for that, or well, maybe not easy, but it's it's possible to find one or two customers who are willing to have me sit knit fine needles, making something really, really um, uh, old fairies, a trend, but uh, reinvented into uh, contemporary style out of this. I will find customers for that, but I don't know if I could get a mortgage 
if I say this is my customer base. Huh. Because my bank will need to know that is there a possibility that she will sell this yeah. the next 10 years to come? And I guess that it will be more difficult to sell that story to my bank manager yeah. than it is to sell one or two or three or four specials. Because I've had people pay me when I was a student, uh, pay me a lot of money to hand knit a sweater. Yeah. But it's, it was more a coincidence than it was based on. It was not based on very good branding. Yeah. It was just more coincidence that somebody really, and women who really wanted, and that was before everybody knitted. Yeah. So then back then, knitting was more unusual in Denmark than it yeah. is here. So, yeah. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you. you Very too. interesting. I learned a lot. Yeah. I hope you do too. Yeah. And we are out. Goodbye. <laughs>